Yeah. When, I, when I came into to Dean's Barbers, as I have done ever since he opened, about three years ago, um, he'd had some new seats. And I instantly recognised where they originally came from. They were the, the cinema seats from the Lost Willie Old Cinema, the Glynn Cinema. Um, and so I said to Dean, do you know what you've got here? And he did, but he kind of didn't really make anything of it. And I was saying, this is like a return of the, you know, they're so important as part of Lost Willie's history. So he told me the story that he, he bought them in an auction. Um, uh, for specifically for the shop so that's it but the story of the seats is when the cinema opened back in the mid 30s the they had seats installed and they stayed there till the cinema shut in around the end of the 60s uh, and what happened was they were all bought and moved to the new sort of theater in St Austell and that's where I I knew the story and I used to go to the theater quite often and feel at home sat in the cinema seats uh, and then about say about four years ago the, the funding for that theatre dried up so it shut and the owners decided to sell the seats. Fortunately they were sold by a local auctioneer and uh, you know ditto it, uh, it, 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 Dean went and bought some and here they are and so they only well they were one of the direct link to the to the old cinema. So they're ever so comfy as cinema seats, and here is the original backing. Uh, obviously, one of these is, or two of these has been reupholstered. So these are, you know, the genuine article. But about well, it's over thirty years ago, uh, I moved to Lost with Hill and happened to buy a, a property very near opposite the the old cinema, and so we got to know Mr. and Mrs. Williams. And the great story is that when he opened the cinema back in the thirties, he um, basically, when it shut in the 70s, he, he, he converted the inside into a house and it was built on props. So, and he would, his front door was where the cinema entrance was. So that, that's what it, he did. Um, and he lived in there and his wife sadly passed away probably in the late 1980s and he continued to live on, on his own. Um, but he was a grumpy old so-and-so and he was always perennially sweeping the, the pavements outside because if the rainwater would flood into the, 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 the inside of the building uh, at times. So that's what, what he, he, he did. But, but he sadly passed away ooh, in the late 1990s, I seem to recall. And then the contents were, were emptied out uh, and it was put on the market at £30,000. Um, and there was a chance for a, a, a group organised, including myself, to buy that. And the owner held that price for a year while we tried to raise the money. But it was before the lottery. So, and there wasn't, there wasn't the money. There was nowhere to apply for funding. Today, it's very different. So, sadly, we couldn't raise the money. We got about £1,500. That's all we could do. And so it was then sold and developed into, into dwellings, really. But I went there um, with Sally Whiffing, who was a curator of the museum. Uh, and w the object, principally, was to go into the, into the roof space and see what, if there were any posters or anything up there. But the only access was outside onto the roof of the sort of the entrance vestibule um, climb up a vertical ladder into a door into the roof space which obviously wasn't lit um, and a whole length of the roof was two uh, ten by two boards so it's you know just under two foot wide you, you walk carefully along the whole length of the inside of the roof and we did find a couple of posters and a few bits and bobs there but then you took a right turning when you got to the end and you came to another door with another vertical ladder which led to Mr Williams secret room and it was incredible inside um, there was a, a wonderful warm atmosphere uh, and it had skylights on it so the light poured in and the whole of, of it was 
covered in, in, in pine wood. So it, it had this wonderful feeling. And he had his shelves and, and all his knickknacks. And, and that's where he used to spend most of his time. In, in, it was his thinking room. Um, all demolished and gone, very sadly. But it was really interesting to get access to it and then help Sally with a few of the artefacts which ended up in the museum. Right, so it's interesting, when he converted the, 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 the cinema to a house, he said the entrance was where he used to go in to buy the tickets, but he built the house on props inside, because inside it was all sloped downhill, and the original sort of angled concrete base was still in there, but there was room to get two or three cars in the, the stage end, and the stage was all still in existence uh, down there, so he would use the main door to, to park his vehicles at night time. So that's what he did, uh, and unfortunately because it fronted straight onto South Street, that if there was heavy rain it, the water would pour in there, that's why he perennially kept it swept and such forth. It was too, but a couple of years, you know, if it had been a couple of years later, we, well, the lottery would have been absolutely perfect. But it, it wasn't, and, it, and you've got to remember that there was no, there was nowhere to apply for money. We, I, I, I oh God, I was a big, I was a treasurer. Um, and we wrote to all the tap rules, because the, 1989, we got all the tap rules from around the world to celebrate the 800th anniversary of Lost Willie, and there were some wealthy tap rules. So we wrote to America, Australia, and everything, say, you know, do you want to, you know, do you hope you enjoyed your celebrity time in the town? And we're trying to do this. Can we have some money? Um, and we got like a promise of 100 quid for the town council, but, you know, it was, it, we wanted some bigger stuff. We couldn't get it. It was very frustrating.